everybody, and welcome to our inaugural episode of Copy with Conrad, a more strategic approach to our weekly tech talks. Um, during this series, we want to um, approach more of a strategic and architectural look at how Microsoft technologies can assist us as we change the way we work in response to COVID-19. Um, I'm joined this morning with our CEO, Conrad Agramont. Um, how are you doing this morning, Conrad? Doing good. And even better because I literally do have a cup of coffee because you know you got to live in the in the right moment. There, same here. Um, I'm I'm not gonna lie and say it's my first. <laughs> oh, that's uh, excellent. Um, yeah. yeah so today not, we're gonna be talking about Azure NAT Gateway, and you've done some uh, pretty cool stuff with this with a couple of our clients over the last couple of weeks. So I'm gonna let you just take it away since you are the expert. Uh, the expert. Well, okay. Um, yeah, so I, I think what was interesting when we we looked at Tech Talk before, and you know, we really try and go to like a deeper level and talk about the ins and outs, and and you know, when we did some of the other series that we did, it was like, but why, right? <laughs> like, why why should I why should I do this thing? And what scenario? So as we do these little copies, copies with Conrad, we have a topic, but then these things can go wherever they need to, and love to have everybody's participation. So anyway, um, so. You know, Azure NAT Gateway, the Network Address Translation Gateway, um, you know, I'll talk a little bit about what it what it is, and here you can read and see a little bit of it, but, you know, there was kind of an original reason. You know, one of the things that we find is, you know, we're deploying these Windows Virtual Desktop solutions, and um, it and it's, it's awesome, right? You get to deploy it out there. Microsoft takes care of all the infrastructure, and, you know, on the back end, you can deploy all kinds of tools and different Windows 10 Pro, shared virtual machines or individual virtual machines um, and even there if you need to access you know low you know quote unquote local resources for the you know, for the for the uh, uh, for applications or other line of business stuff that you need to get maybe you have an existing file server or whatever you can use a site-to-site -site vpn which you've helped customers out with or if you have you know or and if you have resources in azure you can do peering and, and that network that has Windows Virtual Desktop can access those resources. So that's all good going backwards, going behind the scenes to your local data, um, going through your existing kind of VPN tunnels if you have them or creating a new one. Um, it's good when you have other Azure resources and you can peer network into those. So the backend routing of it, you know, is is pretty straightforward and, and, and figured out. Lots of stuff to, to configure, but still that's screen through. But then you have this other scenario, right? So when people are in that Windows Virtual Desktop scenario, and this can be used for more, but this is one really cool scenario that we found for this was, well, when, when people are in those desktops, whether they're contractors or they're employees, um, and they go out to the internet, um, you know, when they, when, without any other configuration WVD, when it goes to the internet, they're gonna get an IP address that has been dynamically available for that virtual network. Um, and it could change, and you don't, you don't know what it is. Um, so the, most of the times it's not a big deal. They're going to Office 365. They're going to go to, you know, um, you know, they're going to do searching, whatever. It's fine. It's like the regular desktop, but here lies the problem, which is, you know, what if you, those, when those, those people on those windows, virtual desktops need to access resources, like let's say another customer's location, right? Like let's say, Hey, when they're in there, you know, we, we need to be able to, use our you know a, a a remote connection through whatever means of a web vpn or a remote desktop session to their network um they want to do whitelisting right they want to be able to say well where are you coming from like i have no idea we just kind of do this um you know the other is well what if you need if people on those desktops need to access other resources like let's say it's a specific uh web-based uh environment for that that has really critical information, it's financial data, it could be the government. Um, and so you need this ability to define your, your, your IP address. So this is where Azure NAT Gateway is, is pretty fantastic. Um, you, can actually, you can actually slip this into the WVD network that you have, so you, you can only attach one NAT Gateway to a given uh, virtual network. And, but what happens when you set that up is you're gonna say, all right, well, when I, when I put this in here, all that really changes is when, when internet traffic goes out, it's gonna have this one, share or this one fixed IP address that's shared amongst all your resources, much the same you'd have at a, at a you know, your, your, uh, at your corporate office, right? With a firewall, everybody pretty much shares one IP address. So it pretty, 
standard technology. But now when they're in WVD, you can say, okay, well, now that I have this, this fixed IP address that we all share, now I can give that IP address to this, the, the, the SaaS-based vendor who has very special data that I'm accessing and they want to do it by, by that. So essentially whitelisting that IP address. Um, if I'm going to access a customer's network to go, go to it, I can say, hey, customer, here's our IP address. So when, when we connect into you, it's that. Um, now, normally that's you could do that when you're in your main corporate office space, but you know, look at us now, we're all remote. I, you know, that doesn't work anymore. We're not all in the office, but you know, the mixture between you know, the, what you could have done at the office, but even still having WVD available to say like, hey, um, hey, to our own team, whenever we access customer resources that need whitelisting, we're only gonna do it through WVD because you know, they're at home, you know, Starbucks, they may move around, but at least we have this one environment that is you know, constrained and managed and well-defined, and that makes it even easier. So again, you can, you can whitelist and restrict resources that you need to, you can give that to when you when you access other kind of customer information or whatever else. Um, so uh, and then uh, the auditing side of it too. So if if the customer wants to then audit where you're coming from with the whitelisting, it's the fixed IP address that you really really know. So you know, really simple thing, not gateway. It's easy to really overlook, but when you really think about all the cool scenarios you can do with it and really secure it, it also allows you on the other end to say, hey, you know what? When people access my environment if they needed a remote connect in for some reason you know there's plenty of resources on their own and if they're going through wvd to restrict them by that ip address um, including uh, if you wanted to restrict access to other services um, through that ip address not to go too crazy on this but you could add that ip address as a trusted zone in uh, conditional access and in intune so that when people access their Office 365 resources, you can say, like, let's say I had contractors and I said, look, my contractors, I want you to access Office 365 to its fullest capability, but only when you go through Windows Virtual Desktop. And so you can set that by creating a policy that says, hey, for this group of people who are my outside contractors, whatever, um, I'm going to use Intune to block, you know, access to everything and conditional access to everything unless they're from this trusted IP address, which is my WVD environment. So this is what allows you to create that constraint around them for both. So kind of cool to see how those things can come together. So anyway, that was one of the things I wanted to talk about today, um, just about what this NAT gateway does and then the possibilities you can have or access or control when you have this little bitty feature mixed together with uh, Windows Virtual Desktop. And by the way, this NAT gateway works with um, if you had uh, uh, a web line of business application, you know, mm -hmm. there, do like load balancers, or whatever. So load balancer would do the same thing, but different for that gateway. But this is really for desktops and servers that want to go out um, and kind of control it that way. Anyway, that's kind of what I uh, thought I'd want to share. Great. Thank you, Conrad. And one thing, one caveat I do want to say is that I've heard these stories and this isn't simply what if. These are things we've done for clients over the last couple of weeks. Um, yep. So, yeah, and the contractor story is particularly compelling because the problem is the contractor's company, they were already on Office 365 and they were running into conflicts when they were trying to work in their customer's environment. Yeah. And we were able to get around that, um, again, with Windows Virtual Desktop. So I really, um, I'm impressed seeing the different things that we're capable of doing. Um, and of course, me being the marketing guy, I'm always looking for that explain like I'm five. Um, <laughs> would it be fair to say that this kind of sets up a a virtual office um, in terms of it acts as a single location? So if you do have like financial information in a colo, then you can treat it with conditional access that, yes, you are in that location. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. You can do both. Right? I mean, you, you can once you set up WVD, the 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 you know, you still kind of have that, but the fact that you get to have this fixed IP address that you can control through conditional access, and most likely if you're using a, a third-party provider um, for like, let's say your finance application, and the, and and so you can say, all right, well, um, well, I'm gonna use Azure Act, I'm blending a bunch of stuff here. I'm gonna use Azure Active Directory as my single sign-on. That is how we control access to that financial ap application through like SAML or OAuth, right, built in. Um, and so people have to authenticate before they access it. And because I have a, have a conditional access rule that says, well, for these 
group of people, right, who might be my contractors or even some of my analysts, or whatever, that they can access in the environment if they come from one of these valid areas. But you, you can also make it not as strong. You can say, well, this for this other group of people, if they do come from this WVD environment, um, but cool. Uh, but if they don't, I want to challenge them with multi-factor authentication. I want to I want to do something. I want to create more rules for them if they're going to access it something outside. But when if they access it from here, I can make the assumption that they're somewhat safe because the only way they can do it is through Windows Virtual Desktop and log in. So it's really cool to see how you can mix all these things together. Very cool. Um, and that that's kind of the point of what we wanted to do with Coffee with Conrad is in our tech talks we really get into like okay this is where you set it up this is the button but we don't really talk about the way that the technologies all fit together so and definitely have not done a tech talk on azure nat gateway so this is pretty cool um so a little bit of background for those of you that are joining that have been part of our tech talks normally our tech talks are client only and at the end of the session we cut off recording and we open it up for an open q a um since this is open for everyone, this will be posted to YouTube, but we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna open up the Q&A session and continue to record. You can go ahead and ask questions in the questions panel um, in your meeting uh, panel there. Um, I'm also going to give the ability here to go ahead and unmute yourself if you'd like to ask any questions about this or if you have any questions about what's going on in your business today. All right, I should have announced the questions panel at the beginning of the session, so we would have had a few backed in. Now, Conrad, how does this work with the other Microsoft uh, security tools? Um, can this be audited with Cloud App Security or anything like that, um, or would you do that elsewhere? Well, the nice thing is that because all these things sit in Azure, all the pieces around Azure security still come to play. So, you know, the the you know the thing about Azure, which is fantastic is that they have all these components that you get to leverage the thing that's also you know frustrated with that with azure is that it has all these components that you get to deal with so it's it's a little <laughs> bit of both sides because you know there's an azure firewall so you can stick the firewall in in between here so you can say okay i still want that single ip but i want to have these these firewall rules so i can really control what kind of traffic goes in and out so there's there's often a view that uh, oh within the virtual network you can have um uh, security groups that have some restrictions, but it's still not doing the same amount of filtering as a firewall would go do. So you have that, then a firewall, then a NAT, and then, you know, if you want to have, uh, there's really no need to put DDoS on this because Microsoft is front-ending all of the services. So from that perspective, you don't really need to do that part of it uh, like you would like a web-based application because um, the entry point is not that IP address and the entry point is not, not that it, it initiates when you connect in through another thing, but I mean, I guess, but um, uh, anyhow, so you can stack those other, other layers um, if you want. Hopefully I answer your question. Oh, absolutely. And when you mentioned Azure Firewall, I kind of had a dumb moment that yes, with Azure Firewall, then that's gonna feed into Sentinel, any of your other SIEMs. So yeah, that's great. Yeah. Oh, those are my future, those are my future coffees with Conrad. <laughs> I know. All the way now. Okay, you know me, I always like the teasers. Um, yes, yeah, so we will be discussing those things here in the future. Um, well, everybody, this, uh, these sessions are every Tuesday and Thursday. Um, on Thursday, we're going to be talking about privileged uh, identity management and some of the cool stuff you can do with just in time and just enough access. Uh, I hope to see you guys then. Again, this will be up on YouTube as well as a short recap on our blog. Oh, we did get one question. Um, with NAT in place, do you have to be concerned with download upload capacity? Uh, no difference than you normally would. Uh, you know, without the NAT, they're still going to be, you know, going through it. Um, the fact that you're, you know, like, well, doesn't this, you know, doesn't this, doesn't it feel like a thing that's doing something in between? Um, all the network traffic that's being handled by Microsoft, it's all it's all software based. And so, uh, the fact that you know you're you're when you go out, you're still getting that IP address, um, and they're still all sharing an IP address. It's just with the the NAT gateway, it just it just becomes fixed. Um, and I will tell you, because you know, I did this myself. So if you ever run WVD, you deployed NAT, I mean, you know, we're here to help you. Uh, it's really not that challenge of setting it up. But once you switch, once you push it in there, uh, all your connections will drop momentarily and then people will get connected. So I wouldn't recommend doing it with heavy workload during the day, but you can definitely do it at night without destroying your network. 
Great, thank you, Conrad. All right, well, we will see you all on Thursday. Again, you can view this on the Agile IT YouTube channel as well as at agileit.com. If you're watching this online and you want to register for future sessions, you can do that at agileit.co slash CWC, short for Coffee with Conrad. Thanks a lot, everybody. Stay safe out there and have a great day. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Conrad.